This Voice Registry podcast is brought to you by VoiceBank.net. I'm Tracy Patton. We have... Bill Holmes Bill here Holmes. today. I'm Welcome, back. Bill. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having me. And yeah, the last time I saw you, you were talking about your teaching background for voiceover. And yes. Today we're going to focus on your directing, producing, okay. what you've done in terms of the voiceover industry. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about that? Well, uh, I have been a freelance director for uh, casting companies such as uh, The Voice Caster, uh, sight and sound casting with Lisa Dyson, and Sheila Manning casting, and a number of others for about 15 years out here in Los Angeles. Part of what I teach is from my experience of directing voiceover actors. Being a voiceover actor myself, it was a very enlightening experience to direct at a casting place because, uh-huh. um, you know, the, the nice thing about a place like the voice caster or sight and sound casting is we are calling in the best people in Los Angeles because uh, basically ad agencies hire us to find the best 25 people for this one particular project, okay? As a freelance director, I was able to listen to all these incredibly talented people and steal their technique. There you go. <laughs> how... And I was getting, uh, you know, $6 an hour at the same uh, time. So. Well, Bill, how did you get into being a, a director? I mean, how does, I mean, I'm sure some of the voice actors that are listening might want to know, wow, how do you get into doing that? I used to direct theater and whatnot, and I, I direct films. And I, I enjoy the directing aspect more so than the uh, the acting part of it because quite honestly you have more control over the project that right way. yeah i was actually auditioning for a voiceover uh-huh. at at the voice caster and uh, the gentleman who used to own the voice caster bob lloyd was actually running the session uh-huh. and we we never saw bob in there running the sessions uh-huh. and i kind of just said so bob why why are you directing a, a casting session he goes well you know uh so and so got pregnant and uh, she had to leave and then uh, this other chick got another job so i kind of need to find somebody to you know, oh. to take these over. I'm so, kind of, and I said, well, you know, I, I live a mile down the road. I'll, I'll come in and direct. And he goes, all right, come on in Friday. Perfect. <laughs> so right place, right time. Yeah. And it was just that simple. So you just, you just sort of took all of your background as an actor and just put it into your directing and said, okay, yeah, yeah. this is what I'm going to do. And, and I was scared to death. I had no idea if I could direct at the time, but it really is something that I, I learned that I had, had a real talent for. And I really like it a lot because, again, it's kind of fun manipulating the performances, you know. And so how long have you been doing your directing voice projects? Directing voice projects? uh, About 15 years now. And tell us, okay, give us some secrets. Everybody wants to know the secret <laughs> the of secret. everything these days. Well, the secret of everything. Uh, I mean, well, what would what can you advise our listeners, our voice actor listeners, about what, you know, we all kind of want to know what you're thinking, what the director's thinking, what the advertising producers are thinking right. on the other side of the microphone. I, I'm trying to give you your best chance as a director the advertising agency sends us the specs. You know, we want these kind of people uh-huh. and we want a nice conversational read. Mm-hmm. So usually if somebody comes into the booth and they they start speaking in an English accent or, you know, thinking, well, I'll bet nobody's done this. Well, <laughs> and do a... people do that? Do oh, have... yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, is that a common thing where people throw it's not in a, an accent? It's not a common thing. It happens with newer people uh-huh. because a lot of actors think, well, I've got to do something that they've never heard all day. <laughs> well, there's a reason why we don't want you to have an English dialect. <laughs> yeah. It's because okay. uh, the guy's from the Midwest, you know. But so, at the same time, you know, you, people should take a risk, but they sort of should do a little well, bit of a calculated risk. If you want to go that extreme with something, because a lot of people do, they, they get an idea in their head that they want to try this. I would do that for a take two. Okay. That's if you good you come in with a, a crazy idea, save that for the second take. Because a lot of times we don't have time yeah. to to hear all your ideas. We need you to come in, do what we're asking you to do, you uh-huh. know, make your choices out in the lobby. And usually we want we want you to get out of there. Okay, because so because we've got a, a waiting list. If if but if you have an idea, say, you know, I had this idea of a uh-huh. British accent, I might go well, let's hear it. That's interesting. I didn't think of that. And we'll listen to it. If I think it's good, I might go, yeah, okay, I'll send it. As long as we sent the client what they really wanted, uh-huh. this might be, you might be the dark horse and get so, it. You know? So what, let's, let's 
Well, let's start with the positive. What do actors do right when they come in to a session? The people who work all the time, Mm -hmm. the veteran actors who we see on a daily basis, uh, they walk in, they do it, they walk out. Because they're so confident and they so know what they do well. That's, you know, it's, yeah, it's that's very good for you to know what you do. As a freelance director, those are the guys I like to work with. Yeah, of course. And those are the guys that I I steal from. <laughs> exactly. And so what are the, what's the, what are the biggest mistakes then that actors make? Uh, there's a couple of big mistakes that actors make. In the middle of everything, you stop and you go, can I start over? Can I start over? Because that really sucked. I really hated yeah, that. Yeah. Well, you don't want to tell us that you suck. And you know what? We've all done it, right? Everybody who's listening. Oh, I've done it. We've I've all done it done myself. It. Sure, but yeah. But that's good to know. Yeah. You know, cough or sneeze or something. I know Bob Bergen, he teaches a class. He tells me, just sneeze. That's right. That <laughs> if is... you really hate what you're doing, because then it doesn't say, I screwed up. You just, it's like, oh, I had a little tickle in my now, throat. Now, that's a great secret. Yeah. And uh-oh, it's out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now everybody's yeah, going to know. All the directors will know. Oh, is that really a sneeze? But, and and oh well. the other thing is, if they say thank you very much, thank you, that was great. What, get out of there. Okay, so don't chat. Don't. Well, be... it, it had nothing to do with chatting. It has everything to do. You know, can I do one more take? Right. Can I do another take? I mean, I've done it in the past. I don't do it often. But if there's somebody in there that's really, you know, obnoxious about it, I'll say, great, yeah, do it. And then I'm going to keep the one that I liked anyway. Right. You know, if the director is telling you, no, I really like that one, that's that's exactly what we needed, chances are they're not lying to you. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> you know? And if you push it too much, they may not call you back the next time, you Does know, it... because you're annoying, you know. So d- does it ever happen that you... You know, you know that this is the person for the job right off the bat. and Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean they'll get the job. Okay, that's it. I have a very good friend who is on Broadway right now doing Young Frankenstein. His name is Fred Applegate. And I was running a session, and Fred Applegate came in, and he read this thing, and he was great. He was perfect for it. Uh-huh. He found the subtleties of the comedy written within the script. And I remember going downstairs at the voice caster, and I said to everybody in the room, I said, if Fred Applegate doesn't book this, you can all kick me in the ass because <laughs> I know he's going to book this. Fred Applegate did not book it. <laughs> they, oh, went, my goodness. they went with somebody who probably sounded like the client's brother-in-law. But he was clearly the best actor who walked in that day. So it is good to know, and we've all been auditioning, and we've all had the rejection experience. Sure. So it is good to remember that. You might have wowed the directors and there's yes. some other random reason right. why you didn't get the job. There are so many reasons why you don't get a job. That's why you, you can't dwell on that. There's the old saying, you don't want to do your best audition in the car on the way home either. Yeah, you know? <laughs> right. Um, because you thought, oh, I should have done this. The, the only thing you can do is be very well prepared, know who yeah. you are, Enjoy the experience of auditioning and then walk out and forget about it because the odds of you booking it are so astronomical these days because because these days when you go to your agent's office in in Los Angeles, you have to go to your agent's office most of the time to audition. It's very hard to book out of an agent's office these days because of the Internet. Right. You're competing against probably 800 people. Yeah, you know, exactly. for a for a 300 dollar radio spot. Clear. So it's it's definitely changed over the years. That's why in the smaller casting places, chances are you're only competing against like 30 to 100. So people. yeah, it's so your down. odds are are better of booking the job. Okay, well let's just get to your uh, technique as a okay. director. Okay, what is your technique? Somebody comes in, let's say they're not really giving you what you want. Let's take that scenario. What do you do? My general technique is to let the actor do what they do. Uh I don't like to over manipulate their performance because it's not my audition. It's their audition. I will give suggestions usually. I've kind of broken it down. What I teach in my classes is it breaks down to pace, attitude, volume, and energy. If you've done your homework of who you're talking to and where are you and all that actor stuff, then chances are you're going to come in with a strong idea of what you want to do. And it's my job to go, you know, that was great, but you came in a little long, just pick up the pace. And I don't need to to say, well, who are you talking to and all that stuff? 
Because generally actors don't like that at the audition. That's a class. Well, and that's a class, and and, yeah. and you as a director don't want to be teaching a class. Exactly. Usually if, if you're directing a, a non-union session with less experienced actors, you tend to go into that stuff. A union job and all the big guns are coming in, it's push a button, let them do what they do, and to, you know, say, hey, how are the wife and kids? So, so really... Every actor who comes in is a different experience. What I love about directing at these casting places is I get to see all of my friends all day, all day long. All of my buddies <laughs> are coming in. And we know you love you love to see your friends. <laughs> I do. You love I do. To, you love to laugh. We like to have the occasional margarita. This Voice Registry podcast was brought to you by VoiceBank.net. Join us next time.